Soldering Part 2. Bring it on. So welcome back to part two. If you haven't seen part one, I do suggest you, uh, you watch that one before this one because it will give you a lot of the background information about the gear I use um, and some basic techniques. So what I'm going to cover um, in this one is uh, three things really. It's um, tag strips, uh, printed circuit boards and also copper clad for when, how you join um, boards together. So kicking off with the copper clad, what I've got here is a couple of um, helping hands as they're called so if I can bring that into this camera here and here's the tag strip that I intend to use um, they're, they're basic tag strips there's you know you can get these things everywhere um, you can uh, you know sort of squires at model railway shows and that kind of things and what I'm going to do is I've got some some copper fleck uh, so the cable out of the flex and it's ordinary um, sort of five amp cable um, and all I've done is, is strip that out. And what I intend to do is to solder this onto one of these complete strips. Um, so therefore, when you connect up your, your bus wire um, or your positive feed for your lights or, or whatever, then you can then use the tags on the other side to take off the power. Um, and then you can use one side for your negative and one for your positive or if you're AC, DC, that kind of thing, all kind of straightforward. So that's how we'll proceed with it. Um, so we need to firstly is to secure this copper to um, uh, to these strips, and the way I use I, I normally do it um, is using these kind of little um, clips. So it's kind of straightforward. Right. So let's kick off. Then we need the soldering iron, and we we'll firstly need to um, get a bit of solder onto. Uh, onto this wire so we can tin it and so here's my solder here's my here's my soldering iron and uh, if I bring some heat in hopefully let's go zoom that lens in a little bit tighter and hopefully you can see that yes you can right so if I put some heat onto here now You can see it's a little bit fumy and always try to avoid these fumes. They're not necessarily uh, good for you, as you can imagine. So we're basically doing is just tinning this, uh, this flex up, which will make it kind of stick to the, to the tag strip a lot easier. Up, get in there. And these helping hands, these these clamp things I use on either side, um, they're they're quite inexpensive. I think you can pick them up for sort of less than ten pounds each. And uh, I went for years not using them, and then suddenly realised that uh, actually they're a lot more useful um, than I really uh, than I realised. Let's say. So the next thing to do, which isn't quite so easy for me because I'm going to kind of do it the wrong way around, is I'm going to, using these two helping hands, let me just check you can see this okay, let's try and zoom right in now. What I'm going to try to do is to solder this flex now onto that tag strip there. So that will give us the power throughout the, uh, all the contacts. So we need to clamp it up. And for that, I use these little sort of, what do you call them? Sort of, I, know, I think I bought them from B&Q in, in a clamp set, as it were. So they were, um, you know, you get sort of three different sizes and these are clearly the... Uh, the smallest ones. Oh, I'll tell you what I will do first, I'm sorry. I am going to put a, a spot of flux on the tag strip just to make this a little easier to, to bond to. I don't normally use a, 
use flux unless it's kind of a, a high temperature job. Um, but I have found on tag strips it does make it somewhat easier to get a good bond. So we'll pop that onto there, clamp it up. We want to try and clamp it so that the the bend in the wire sort of puts pressure onto the tag strip so that um, it's easier for it to, to bond as it were. So it's on so it's alongside it from the start. It's, no, come on. It's better. Put one on the other end. Okay. And hopefully you can see that that's kind of making contact. all the way along. Let me just try and rotate it a bit more. Okay. Now bear with me this time because it's, I'm obviously feeding it in the wrong way around if that makes any sense to you. I'm trying to do it away from me. So, I'll start in the middle and all I'm going to do is put heat onto the wire and then feed the solder into the joint and take away the solder, take away the soldering iron and then go from one to the other working your way along the strip. Seem to have missed one out. And these tag strips then are ideal to do your droppers um, if you're into DCC wiring. And then you can put your droppers onto the other end of these tag strips, um, knowing that you've got to get a good bond and good uh, connectivity up into your up onto the rails. Right, so I'll just take off the two clips and have a little look at that. That seems pretty good. There's a couple of gaps. I don't know if you can see there's a gap here where I need to redo it and I need to do the end ones. toward the ends. I haven't made it easy for myself today because I've I'm using a used tag strip which I, uh, I recovered from an older layout. But obviously with yours it should be nice and shiny and much easier to solder. If you have an, uh, a little electrical meter, then it's always best to run the meter over the tag strip at the end, just to make, you ha make sure you have got good connectivity and no dry joints before you proceed with um, wiring it all up. Okay, nearly there. Disconnect that and have a little look. Remembering that it is quite hot. So I should just snip off the edges. And 
I think I've got two to redo. Which, I'm sorry, but I'm going to just do it facing me so I can see it properly this time. If you're mounting it for um, just to use it as a connector block on the on your layout, this this um, uh, the tag strip, you can actually put a piece of paper down on the board first, um, so you can label up exactly what you're doing, and then using uh, then put, then mount the tag strip on top of the piece of paper, so that the piece of paper then um, is a good is is a guide for you in the future to know which cable goes to whatever. So you can put that underneath the board before you put the, before you actually install, install the tag strip. Okay. Okay, it's pretty good. So, it's never going to be the prettiest soldering job in the world. Um, and there is one thing you need to do before you, before you finish this and start, um, and start installing it on the board, and that is to, to rinse it under the tap. I failed to mention that during my last video because you can get a kind of a greeny corrosion um, on top of the solder joints. So if you can take it to the tap and rinse it off, otherwise give it a good wipe with a, with a tissue if you can't kind of get it into in that area. But there we go. So the only other thing to do then for you is to put another um, set of uh, another wire on the other side. And then like I say, if you, if you mount it then on your layout with a piece of paper underneath it, and then you can actually mark up the terminal one goes to 0.3, terminal four goes to 0.4, to the station lights or whatever, and you can mark up exactly what, what you're doing um, before you screw this to the underside. To, to drop, to, to solder droppers from your layer onto the board when the boards are already installed rather than doing it before you put the boards down. It isn't that difficult now. Um, all these tags have a hole in them. If I can zoom right in. So if you were to pop your cable through the small hole and then solder it, then you can hold the soldering iron with one hand, the solder with the other, and the cable should stay still. Um, being held in place by poking it through the hole. So there we go, that's tag strips. Quite a straightforward um, thing to do. And it's actually a good soldering exercise for you to sort of cut your teeth on because it doesn't have to look pretty. There's nothing here to damage. These things cost a couple of quid. And if you screw it up, which I really, really can't see how you can, then you can just simply go and get another one. Here is a piece of circuit board, a printed circuit board, which I did a long, long time ago. And you can see the corrosion I mentioned. You've got a, like a, a greeny tinge um, where I, I forgot to wash it off afterwards. Um, and this is used in inside um, coaches um, as part of a lighting circuit um, to provide power to the, uh, power to the, um, to the LEDs that light it up. And that's what we'll look at next. So here is my pack of LEDs. And these are warm whites. And the thing about LEDs is they only work one way. They are polarity conscious and one leg is longer than the other to show you which, whoops, sorry, to show you which leg is the positive and the positive leg I believe is the longer one. Um, I watched a video by Everard Junction and Richard in that explained about um, putting in um, lights into coaches and it was uh, it was an easy task to do and you do a lot of um, damage let's say uh, on the inside of the coach but the, the end product was very good. Um, but there's really no other way around it. If it doesn't come with, with lights in it, then you kind of have to fit it and you have to cut the, the inside of the coaches up to allow it to, to fit these, these boards. And this is um, part of this, this, this copper circuit board. And as you can see, it's covered in holes and through the holes, you poke your electronic components and then you solder in place. So 
what I thought I would do is just show you how simple it is really to solder these items in place. So if you poke your component through the circuit board and then we'll solder it up. Now the kind of obvious thing to state is that you need to poke it through from the non-conductive side um, so you're, you're going to poke it through onto the copper and then it's the copper side there that we're going to solder. Easy. Okay, let's have a little look. So, you just kind of hold this in place. Now by bending the legs over, which should kind of keep it in place. So, if I again use these helping hands, and I'm not going to use any flux this time because this is a quite a straightforward little job really. So I'll use the helping hands to hold it steady, like so. And then with my solder, and all I'm going to do is to push the uh, soldering iron against um, the, the, uh, the, the leg of the LED and then pop a little bit of uh, solder alongside it and then the heat should let it run and it should be good to go. I should just tin this, um, tin up this soldering iron again. A bit of solder off, okay. So, all I do is move in nice and close and hopefully you can see this. So I push the soldering iron alongside the leg. In goes the heat and on goes the solder. Take the soldering iron away. Allow it to cool. That should be good, and it is. I should just pull the other leg straight and do the same on that one, because it was the bend in the leg that was holding it in place. Wait for the heat to come through. Pop the solder in, take the soldering iron away, and allow it to cool. Now when you're using this kind of circuit board, what you have to maintain is a gap between the copper channels. So if I can zoom right in here and hopefully it will focus. And as you can see, there this, the, the, the insulation line, if I use this other LED, up the center separates these two, uh, these two copper channels. Where are we there? And as you can see, the solder on there is quite good. And what you don't want to do if you're soldering LEDs is the last thing you want to do now is cut these tails off. Because if you cut the tails off, you then don't know which one's negative and which one's positive because you'll have lost the perception of which ones are longer and which ones are shorter. So moving on to point motors, um, here's a uh, tortoise point motor and Pico point motors are exactly the same. There's a hole in each of the uh, solder tags for you to pop your cable through. Um, as I said in the past, the problem with soldering, of course, is you need four hands. You need one hand to hold the soldering iron. You need another hand to hold the solder. Um, you need another hand to hold the wire. And then you need another hand to hold the component. Fortunately here with these, oh, sorry, this is a breakout cable which I've made up for tortoise point motors so that before I install the point motor I can then solder all these tags on and then once the point motor is installed underneath the board if I need to make any changes to the cabling <coughs> excuse me, then I can make the changes on the end of a bit of chop block rather than need to re-solder any of the tags. So I'll solder on a couple of these so all I do is simply pop the cable through the hole bend it over and then with that in position it should kind of stay still and then all I need to do is add the heat and the solder and we should be good to go. Let me just zoom in a little bit so perhaps you can see a little better. Now this, I have soldered this tortoise point motor before, so it doesn't really need tinning, there is solder on it. So all I'm going to do now is add the heat, if you can see. So I'll just push the cable down with the soldering iron. 
and then give it a few seconds come in with a solder and then move them both away and it's as simple as that so give it a tug yep we're good and then I'll just do the second one and pop it through the hole bend the end over so it kind of holds it in place in with the heat give it a few seconds and then with a solder just remember to keep your head away from these fumes that come off they're not very nice they can be toxic um, and the last thing you want is, uh, is an injury so there we go quite, uh, quite kind of straightforward and you would just repeat the process for each one so easy as that the next subject is a little more difficult now bear with me with your imagination that this piece of timber is actually two boards of a model railway and the line across it is where they would join so if you can imagine these boards are pushed together and they're coupled i.e they're, they're clamped up or whatever and what i try to show you is how we would install a piece of track um, cut it and then using something called copper clad which is this stuff here um, is how you can um, make a more permanent fixing copper clad is available from um, all good model railway stockists as usual I think I bought this from Squires at a model railway show and it was £3.15 it's basically a piece of resin with a thin piece of copper on the top so what you need to do is um, and this really is for people who have exhibition layouts or the people who take their boards apart regularly um, such as you may have a lifting flap um, and then the ed edge of the track becomes vulnerable um, if it was just pinned down so you want to give it a much more permanent fixing so what I've done is I've cut out two small pieces of copper clad and then I'll pop these uh, onto this piece of timber I can zoom this in And then with a piece of track to kind of emulate the uh, the end of the of the line what I've got this is a used piece of track so I've cleaned up the underside of the track and the sides of the track um, so I've cleaned them off with a piece of emery cloth and whilst I, whilst I remember I'll also just give these pieces of copper a quick uh, clean to make sure that the solder takes well to them just in case there's a little bit of oxidization on these pieces of copper so um, I pre-drilled these and I'm going to use something called gimp pins um, though on your layout you may choose to use something uh, a little more permanent such as you might want to use screws so there's the piece of track I've taken out three sleepers I'll pop that in place there and either side of where the join in the in the railway boards would be okay and using these gimp pins what I shall just go and do now is to pin the track down and pin those copper uh, plates down right so that's the pieces of copper in place and those are the the four gimp pins and you may choose to countersink and put screws in um, to camouflage them a bit better but that's obviously a choice is yours what you do need to do of course because they're made of copper is you need to insulate them um, from either side otherwise once you've soldered your um, rails to the to the copper then clearly you're going to get a short so with a dremel I'll just cut across those and take great care not to go through the boards and all you're trying to do is just to clip the copper to stop um, a short coming across okay 
I should just nail, nail the track down. Okay, so there we are with the track in place. So, what we need to do now is, as it's a bit, uh, a bit more of a, of, a, of a heat sink here with the copper uh, and the steel rail, rails, what I will do is put on some flux because it does make the job, uh, the flux run, uh, the solder run so much easier um, because it is a bigger job. When you're doing smaller things like circuit boards, it really isn't necessary, but because it's copper and steel, and they absorb the heat off the soldering iron quite quickly, uh, does make the job more difficult. Okay. Okay, a little bit of a tinning. Okay, so you add your, pop your soldering iron in and let the heat uh, transfer into the rail and onto the copper. And when it's been on there for a, a good few seconds, introduce the solder and let it flow, keeping the solder on the outside of the rail, not on the inside, because obviously if you do the inside then it will affect the flange. Okay, that's one. Again, wait a few seconds. And having an exhibition layout, this is the most vulnerable piece of your layout, it really is. When you go to an exhibition you do worry about, um, about your board joints, about disturbing them. Obviously when you design a layout, it's always best to make sure that your board joints, that your rails are running straight rather than on a curve, um, otherwise you induce even more problems. Here's the heat coming in now, in goes the solder. Okay, turn it over, have a look at the other side. It's starting to warm. Okay, and then the last one. If you should melt one of the sleepers on either side, it's not the end of the world because you can quite simple. It's quite simple to change the sleepers um, and replace those. The main thing is you get a good bond here. On the exhibition circuit, it's kind of accepted that um, the board, where the boards um, join, the model railway is never going to look its best because you have to have um, a substantially strong bond and clearly um, copper clad is, is one of the ways in which you do it. Um, um, it is, it's not necessarily easy to, um, to camouflage where, where you've um, where the joints have taken place. Right, that all appears good. 
um, and obviously you'd need to then um, wash this down um, or, or rinse it off really to stop the corrosion from the uh, from the flux and then all you need to do is um, dremel these two rails And it's as easy as that. So all kind of straightforward, hopefully. Um, in true Blue Peter fashion, here's some I made earlier and have cooled down. And to test their strength, if you can see me kind of pulling on this, then clearly it's not going to break away the solder joint from the rails. It's well and truly bonded. So, and then uh, naturally, if, it, if, it's, if it was your own layout, you would uh, simply just disconnect the boards and pull them apart, but it gives you your decent, a decent uh, ending. Um, obviously, you can paint these into, into grey or whatever, um, ballast around them and try and, and, try and um, camouflage them the best you can. Um, but that's the way I do my, my board joints. Um, you may have a better way, which, in which case, please leave, a, leave comments below. Just the one final piece, and that is... Um, working with brass and this is a, a brass signal gantry from Traintronics and um, I've obviously constructed it with brass um, though people did tell me I could always use super glue which uh, is kind of uh, rather humorous really it defeats the object of modeling but when you go to a model railway exhibition you see the uh, I think it's Parkside Dundas type um, signal gantries everywhere and they're, they're, they're great little kits um, they got much better rivet detail than than this uh, this brass kit but um, it makes a change to, to see something um, that isn't uh, isn't more typical um, and to do this in brass it was a, a struggle but um, if you have the time and the inclination do buy a, a small brass kit and have a go um, it can be somewhat daunting to get it right um, but I thoroughly enjoyed making this um, though when it's sprayed over with um, the normal Halfords grey primer, it'll look just like a plastic one. But it was, it's great fun, fun making these. Um, and with the, the flux I use, it's a, it's, the, it's a liquid flux. But when you go and buy the kits, please find, uh, ask for advice then from the supplier um, and they'll put you on the, on the right track. Well, that just about wraps things up. Hopefully you've uh, learned some of these uh, little projects that we've been going through. But please bear in mind the safety things that we spoke about, about the fumes from solder, burning yourself and eye protection. Um, so all, it, uh, all I need to do is say, don't forget, please to uh, like and subscribe. And if you're watching on the YouTube app, there should be a video here and here. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.